Thank you, Mark. Uh, you know how much I love being here with all of you. And, and it's great to see so many familiar faces and new faces as well. And some of you, I, I only know you by your names, but it's nice to see you uh, as well. I deeply appreciate your being here. And the journey that we've all been on over this last month, has we, whether you have done every set or this is your first set, each of us has been on a journey. Over this, over this month of Elul, as we try to figure out what does it mean to release. The writings have been deeply moving and challenging. And I must say that I have, am uh, deeply moved by how bare several people have been in terms of their writing and just so open and generous and prodding, prodding of us. And so it seemed like the first, the, that one of the ways to uh, move into what does it mean to be responsible with our release? Uh, it would be, I wanted to share with you a quote from Heschel. The prophet sought to convey that morally speaking, there is no limit to concern one must feel for the suffering of human beings that indifference to evil is worse than evil itself. That in a free society, some are guilty, but all are responsible. I'm gonna read that again. The prophet sought to convey that morally speaking, there is no limit to the concern one must feel for, for the suffering of human beings. That indifference to evil is worse than evil itself that in a free society, some are guilty, but all are responsible. And it seems to me that part of what our teachers this over this last month have, are moving us to is to take responsibility, take responsibility for who we are, for what we have, to remember what we are told in the Torah that if we get so big that we think we did all of this on our own, we actually are separating ourselves from God because God is with us on all of this. God has provided the bounty for us. And so the release of old ways of thinking, old ways of being, the willingness to explore terrifying territory, important territory is as hard as we make it. And what I know is the more I hold on to something, <laughs> the, the more I am resisting being who I need to be for this moment. And the invitation in the, the Smita year is to grow into being who we want to be next. Starting from a place of knowing we are enough, what are the ways, as we said this week, that I'm feeding systems that don't that serve me and yet don't serve me that uh, aid me and yet don't aid me and they are structures human structures that some of us benefit from and some of us don't benefit from and if what we want is a more equitable world what are the steps i need to take to dismantle the, their, the existence of those structures inside of me, including how they may shape my identity and release what does not serve me, really does. And then what I mean, what doesn't serve me, what doesn't serve me to aid me in serving the divine. And that means having compassion, being as honest as I can with others as I am with myself, it means being curious and not really avoiding shame, but understanding that shame is, some, is a feeling that only lasts as long as I allow it to last. If I allow it just to move through me, I come to a place of being responsible. And from that place, there is compassion and generosity for everyone, including myself. I may not know how to do what needs to be done, but I stand in a place where I'm ready to be guided by the people or person I'm interacting with and by the divine. 
because my heart is open and I know, and I'm willing to accept the challenge of being with something that is wonderful and something that is hard. And so I invite you as you to get yourself comfortable if you haven't already done so. And in, as I always do, I invite you to bring whatever is with you. Whether, and wherever you are right now, whatever is stirring, bring that fully present and let it be with you in this meditation. It's not a distraction, it's part of the meditation. By accepting it and embracing it, it no longer interferes with, your, with the meditation. And from that place, just we're gonna do uh, three big sighs. And on the last one, I've all, as always, I invite you to make a lot of noise. For those who are joining me for the for, first time, I'm gonna to count to four, do a pause and then count from four to one. And then I'll remind you about what to do on the third one. And one, two, three, four, and four, three, two, one, and one, two, three, four, and four, Three, two, one. And at the end of this last breath in, I invite you in this next breath in, may it not be the last breath, that I invite you to release any sound. Uh, I'm both very excited and a little nervous, so don't be surprised if mine's a little loud. And one, two, three, Four. Oh. Wiggle your toes or your fingers. If you're feeling a little achy, breathe into it. Just be more into your body. And you may begin to feel and envision a circle of energy moving down over you. It might be tingling your head, your forehead, as it moves down over your eyes and over your nose. Breathe a little bit of it in as it goes over your mouth and down your, the back of your head. Let it find your voice and your shoulders and feel it move and inviting tingling into your fingers. If there's tightness in your chest, let it massage it, relax it. As it goes down over your chest, down to your waist, and just below your waist is your healing center. And it goes down over your back and your belly onto your thighs. Down your thighs and over your knees and into your ankles. And your feet. And let it release through your fingers, off your shoulders out of your head, out of your feet, just let it all release.
And for the next few moments, be with letting go. And be curious with whatever arises. Listen and hold lightly.
And as we begin to move into a, a new space, we take our dominant hand and place it over our heart. And those of us who are able and extend our other hand out to the world. And we direct love. It can be to specific people. And is, as it goes, may it fall on all who need it. And as we close, we take that hand and now put it on top of our dominant hand, renewing ourselves. And when you are ready, I invite you to open your eyes. I just got chills seeing all these smiles. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. <laughs> so Sabrina kindly offered to take us out and seal today's practice uh, by blowing the shofar. We to do our strength, our strength, and for that, and then we'll follow that with the mourner's kaddish. But let's stay with that, stay with that beautiful practice. And as we've learned this month, to attune ourselves attune our souls and the vibrations within us to the vibrations of the shofar itself. Thank you so much, Sabrina. That's your cough. And friends, yes. we um, seal our practice as always by inviting those of you who are in mourning uh, or observing at your art side if you've had a loss um, or if you're carrying any grief to uh, join us in the Mourner's Scottish and to add the name or names of those you're honoring, remembering today in the chat box and for the rest of us to bear witness uh, to the grief of our fellow practitioners um, who I invite to rise in body or in spirit with me for Kaddish. I 
Amen. Well, great thanks to Sabrina Sojourner for leading us so beautifully uh, to bring our Shofar project for 5781 to a conclusion uh, in the waning days here of Elul. Um, for those who are able and would like to, we welcome to stay on for some conversation with Sabrina about the teaching and today's practice. We hope you can join us for that. Um, if you are not able to or you're leaving now, we want to wish you a sweet restorative Shabbat and a Shana Tova Umtuka, a, a, a good, healthy um, year full of blessings, full of the blessings of Shemitah, of release, of letting go. Um, as Sabrina beautifully led us today, and of, in that process, growing an awareness of our responsibility to our empathy for the pain of our fellow human beings and of the pain of this planet, which we are charged with serving, with tilling, and with tending. Thanks so much to Eileen Gruber, who sponsored today's practice, in memory of Hai Sherman, on the occasion of his 27th York site, Zichron Oli Bracha, Thank you, Eileen, and may his memory be a blessing for you always. Um, a week from today, by the way, friends, I forgot to mention earlier, will be our quarterly uh, co-sponsored meditation with the Jewish Addiction Awareness Network. Um, that uh, will be our regular set, but we'll be elevating and uh, making reference to principles of 12-step recovery in Jewish mindfulness meditation. It's, that's a meditation for session for everyone. But if you know of people who would benefit from it, who are in recovery or have loved ones in recovery, please do spread the word. I'll be leading that session next Friday. And um, of course, as always, thanks. Great thanks to Adi Stein, whose stalwart holding of our space enables all of this to happen. So if you're able to stay on, please do so. If you have questions for Sabrina, please add them to the chat box and preface them with question if possible. Uh, I see many, many new messages. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, Sabrina, I actually wanted to start by just asking you if you have it handy to, to read again that, that passage from Heschel that you yes. shared at the beginning, especially the, just the part that you, you know, you read, you read more than once. Yes. I still have it. Uh, and I believe it's from his book on the prophets. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. The prophet sought to convey that morally speaking, there is no limit to the concern <clears throat> one must feel for the suffering of human beings, that indifference to evil is worse than evil itself, that in a free society, some are guilty, but all are responsible. So as you read that, and then you read it again, of course, I felt this um, recognition of the truth of those words and a little bit of terror, right? <laughs> of, oh my God, it's, it's so much. Um, but that's exactly what our practice this month has been leading into, you know? Um, and that when we let go of, of, of illusion and yes. we really see the truth, when we're willing to live in truth, then, um, then we can see why we've been pushing it away, many of us, because it's, uh, it's too painful. Many people, of course, don't have the luxury of, of being in denial and avoidance. Um, so I wanted to ask you about that, about, you know, um, because then I found that the sighing practice, I thought, oh my God, oh my God, that feels so good. Um, and I became aware of, all that energy that is locked up. And then it became much more possible to bear that 
you know, to, to yes. be with that truth. So I guess that's what I, I, you know, that's, that's my takeaway from your teaching today, which honestly couldn't have been better for what we're looking for. Um, we're aiming for going into the new year. So just wanted to check that out with you. Um, so. uh, yes, it, it is. It's only in the, the, the sighing and the, and the release, which is a release. It's a physical release. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's physicalizing the, the release. Mm -hmm. And yes, all sorts of room gets created. Mm -hmm. The other thing that, as I, I've been teaching, mm -hmm. as you know, is to let in the feelings that we're resisting mm -hmm. because it's the resistance that maintains them. Mm -hmm. And we, when we move through them, there is so much more available, including more of ourselves that's available when yeah. we do that. So, mm -hmm. um, thank you for that. Yeah. And I think that's just to, you know, underline that, um, growing an awareness of the resistance, which is what came up for me while you were reading the words. Cause I, oh, oh no, don't read those words again. <laughs> um, That's actually why I read it twice. I could whenever tell, I use it. I could, yeah. <laughs> and you should, and you should. Um, because then, you know, it's the awareness of, I cannot deny my resistance, but then you offered, you know, such a compassionate response to hold the resistance and then it dis and then it could dissipate enough to say, I, you know what, I can bear that, I can be with that, I can, I can, you know, and now I can hopefully respond to the responsibility, right? In just a little, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just a little bit this year. And by the way, for everyone who's been with us, you know, um, this practice of shmita is a very ambitious one, and 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 you know, we're just uh, inviting everyone to explore, explore the process, explore the practice and um, tiny baby steps of growth. So, um, all right. Um, I don't know if you can put the, uh, so it's in, some people are asking if you can put it into the chat, which I don't know if you have it on like a computer there that you can easily do that, but it's in his book, The Prophets. It's Abraham Joshua Heschel. Yeah. It's, like any sentence in paragraph, this is actually a very long paragraph uh, that that is that I cut to the chase because it, it, that is that there's a lot of stuff out there. We cannot be indifferent. That we are actually I would and I add that when we are indifferent, we're shutting down a piece of ourselves. And the more we, we more that we are indifferent to protect ourselves, the more we shut down and the less available we are to ourselves and to others. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Get the nail on your head, on the head. Um, uh, I'm just saying that I, wanna, well, I do want to wish Rabbi Aaron Lever who wrote in about uh, his, uh, his um, experience with COVID and wish you, uh, Aaron, Rabbi Lieber has been a regular throughout these many months. And Aaron, we send you, all of you send you love and prayers for Rifuash Lema, complete healing, of course, for you and, and for all others who, who are dealing with illness of any kind um, among us here, those are among your loved ones. And of course, the suffering brought on by uh, the, the, the uh, ramifications of climate change that we're witnessing um, every day. Um, so I'm just looking if there are any other questions. Um, just a lot of appreciation. Thank you, Elena, for finding that and putting it up. So. Oh, great, great, great. And so, so much appreciation for you, Sabrina. Um, hope you can take the, hope you can take that in. Um, so maybe, maybe let's close here. And uh, maybe the way to do that is, is the best way to do that today is to, again, come back to the hand over the heart, the dominant hand mm. and the outstretched arm. The image I had when you, you know, you've done that before, Sabrina. Uh -huh. And the image I had today was of the Statue of Liberty, you know, mm. um, you know, uh, uh, I think she's got the right hand raised and the left hand holding, you know, holding the book over her heart. And we can all draw some inspiration for a year of release and uh, increased freedom, increased justice, 
increased care for mm. and tending of this yeah. of this incredible planet we are blessed to live on in this year of Shemitah and wish everybody here um, health, healing, repair, wholeness, um, joy even, mm -hmm. a lot of joy in this new year. And to you, Sabrina, so much gratitude for all you have given us um, over these months and just for you know sharing from your heart and from yourself and uh, it enriches every single one of us. So thank you so much to you. And um, I hope everyone has a meaningful Shabbat, a meaningful holiday. Thanks again, Adi. Uh, thanks, Eileen. And most of all, thanks to each and every one of you for your beautiful devotion to this practice. Gratitude to our many incredible teachers who have led us uh, many for many months and especially in this month of Elul. So Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shana Tova. Shabbat Shalom, Shana Tova. <laughs> and we'll see you next week.